This video was sponsored by Recoverit from Wondershare. In this video, I'm gonna show you the best, easiest, and most realistic way I've found to replace a boring or overcast sky with something a lot more interesting, colorful, and visually appealing. This trick is especially useful for outdoor portrait photographers who might wish to replace a blown out sky with something more evenly exposed, thereby creating a more professional and attractive look. Now, when I say this can be done easily, guys, I really do mean three simple steps. So without wasting any more time, let's get started with the video. One of the most common issues that photographers face when shooting outdoors is how to keep the sky from looking so overexposed, washed out, or blown out in their images. Normally when we look at a scene or landscape with our eyes, we take it for granted how easily we're able to clearly see both the ground and the brighter sky above. Unfortunately, the digital sensors in our cameras don't yet have the dynamic or tonal range that our eyes do, making it very difficult for both the ground and the sky to be both properly exposed and visible in the same shot. Now, these days, there are many ways that we can solve this pesky problem, including what I've highlighted on screen right now. But for the sake of today's video, we're gonna be exploring the post-processing method of sky replacement using Photoshop. So here we are in Photoshop, and as you can see, we have a fully edited photo of Francesca. This photo comes from a recent fall-inspired shoot at the top of Mount Royal in Montreal, Canada, which is actually right over there. This image was captured on a very gray, very overcast day, and although the sun was hidden behind the clouds, it was still very much a backlighting based photo shoot, and therefore, I did have to dial down the shutter speed enough to ensure that the model was somewhat properly exposed. The only issue is that in doing so, I had inadvertently overexposed or blown out the sky behind Francesca, creating this massive white blob above her head, which to be honest, just didn't look very good or professional. So now that you understand the context of this overblown image, let's get right into fixing it. And the first thing I'd recommend you do is begin by sourcing your sky replacement photo. And to do that, you have a few options which I've listed off on screen. But my personal favorite is to use a free stock photo website such as Pexels or Unsplash. And then to either download your selected image or just simply zoom in and take a screenshot. And don't worry about the resolution of the screenshotted image, it is definitely sufficient and in any case we're going to be blurring this image so as to match the depth of field in our original photo. Whichever option you choose, the name of the game is to choose something that closely matches both the color temperature and the time of day of your original photo. This is so as to reduce the amount of post-processing work required when blending the two images together in later steps. So with your chosen sky replacement image downloaded, let's go ahead and click File, Place Embedded. Select your chosen photo and hit OK. From here, hold Alt or Option and click and drag the corner of the embedded image outwards to enlarge it to fill the full width of the underlying photo. And then click and drag the image itself so that it fits approximately over the sky in your original image. Hit OK and then feel free to turn off the layer visibility and come on down to the layer with the original raw image. Click it and then click into Select Sky. And automatically, Photoshop will make a selection of, you guessed it, the sky. Click back into the layer containing your new sky image and then click onto this layer mask button right over here to make a custom sky cutout of your new sky replacement image. Next, let's come on down to this little layer mask connecting or linking icon right here and click it once to make it disappear. This will enable you to adjust or move around your replacement sky within the confines of your predetermined cutout. So now you can relocate your composite layer into whichever position you believe looks and fits the best. Okay, now my friends, it's blending time. And this is where the real magic happens because what we're gonna do now is blend the blurriness, colors, and lighting of our new sky with that of the rest of our photo so that it merges in the most natural and seamless way possible. And so let's begin by selecting our sky replacement layer and clicking into Filter, Blur, Gaussian Blur. Now the idea here is to shift this slider to the right until you get to a point where the sky starts to blend better and more naturally with its blurry surroundings. So bringing it to a value of about 28 seems to work best in my opinion. Now, quick tip, if you want to blend the edge of your cutout even better so that the transition between these two images is as smooth and natural looking as possible, 
Photoshop offers many options to achieve this, but my personal favorite because of its control and accuracy that it allows for is to click into the layer mask and then using a soft white brush with a low flow, you can slowly start to paint over the bottom of the edge of your mask to smooth out its edge and gradually reveal more of the layer onto your artboard. We can also go ahead and repeat these steps, this time using a black brush to paint over the top of the edge to smooth out this line even further by gradually removing this layer's visibility from our composition. With that done, it's time to create a curves adjustment layer, which is my go-to tool for blending in the tones or lighting of any composite element. Hold Alt and then click right in between these two layers to isolate your curves adjustment application to the sky replacement image alone. Now, a good way to compare the lighting of both images, as well as to determine exactly how much lighting adjustment needs to take place, is to use an assistance black and white layer. This will remove all of the color from our artboard whilst isolating the luminosity or brightness values of both images, making them more comparable. Now because the lighting or tones in our selected sky replacement image already closely matches that of our original photo, the subsequent lighting adjustments needed to take place will fortunately be minor. In fact, all we really need to do in this case is drop the mid-tone brightness slightly by clicking into it and reducing its value by a couple notches. And then repeating the same for the whites, AKA the brightest highlights in our sky. All right, so far that's looking pretty good to me, at least as a black and white image. I'd say the sky replacement composite is starting to look quite decently blended with our original photo. But now it's time for the final frontier in terms of blending our sky with the rest of our image, and that is to match up the colors so as to make the sky replacement image fit even more naturally and realistically with the rest of our composition. But before we do that, I'd like to take a minute to talk about our sponsor, Recover It by Wondershare, without which I wouldn't be able to do any of this fancy stuff in Photoshop because, well, I'd be so worried about keeping all my data saved that I'd barely be able to get anything creative done. Okay, maybe that's being a little bit dramatic, but if you're like me and you need peace of mind in order to perform your best creatively, then you're gonna love what this product has to offer. What Recover It is, is essentially a data protection software that allows you to back up and store all your most precious and valuable information so that you never have to stress about losing it. Whether it's viruses or hard drive corruption, accidental deletion, abrupt power loss, or emptied recycle bins. Data loss can come from anywhere, anytime. And trust me, I've been there before and it really, really sucks. In fact, I still have PTSD from it to this day. Or at least I did have PTSD until I discovered Recover It. Now I have the ultimate peace of mind knowing that if something unfortunate were to happen to my data, I would easily be able to recover it in three simple steps and all from the comfort of my own home. So no more shipping off your hard drive to unreliable, expensive data centers. Now the power is in your hands. So you can go back to doing what you do best, creating amazing work and never having to worry about the safety of your data ever again. Want to try it for yourself? Then simply go ahead and click the link in the video description down below and download the software for free. Now for more complex photo composites, what I would recommend you do is use the color balance and selective color adjustment layers as I demonstrate in my portrait mastery course pack. But since we're working with a relatively simple sky replacement, I would suggest using a hue and saturation adjustment layer. From here, let's go ahead and select the blues from this drop down menu over here and then shift the hue slider to both the left and right until the blue colors in our sky replacement image start to blend optimally with the colors in the rest of our artboard. Obviously dragging the slider all the way to the left past cyan and towards green does not match well, nor is it particularly flattering to the overall composition. The same can be said for dragging the slider all the way to the right. The purple tones clearly stick out like a sore thumb and serve as a pretty big distraction. So what I would encourage you to do is to carefully shift the slider back and forth until you find a happy medium where the colors almost lock in and and blend in perfectly with the rest of the colors in frame. So with that done, let's move on down to the saturation tab and drag this slider to the left to subtly desaturate our blues. This will not only blend the sky replacement image better with its surroundings, but will also help to make the colors more balanced, less prominent, and less distracting. We want our viewer's focus to be directed mostly towards our main subject in frame, and softening some of the surrounding colors is a good way to achieve this. Let's go ahead and click into the science and do the same over here. Now, as a bonus composite blending tip, 
I'm going to show you something that is often overlooked when it comes to the advanced blending process. And that is to ensure that the grain or noise in your sky replacement image matches that of the grain or texture in your original photo. And as you can see, if we zoom in here to the edge of our photo composite, you can clearly see a difference in the texture or visible grain in both of these images. The sky replacement image has a very clean and smooth feel, yet the underlying image has a much grainier texture. And an easy way that we can replicate this grainy texture in our new sky image is to click back into its contained layer and then go up to filter, camera, raw filter. From here, simply scroll down to the effects panel Click this little drop down arrow and then proceed to move this window over to the side so that we can clearly see the target level of grain in our original photo, which we will be using as a reference. From here, all you need to do is shift the grain slider to a value of about 14, increase the size to about 30, as well as a shift in the roughness slider to a value of about 40. Hit OK and let's return to our main artboard in Photoshop. Now, as you can see, the texture in both of these images is starting to look much more blended overall. Let's zoom out here and group together all of our sky replacement layers and take a look at a before and after, before and after. 